This is CNN. Out of our five senses, sight is the one that we rely on the most to experience the world around us. About 75% of the sensory neurons in our brains are processing visual information. But imagine for a moment that you are blind. Once the eyesight begins to diminish, there may be no getting it back. But now an implant, known as the bionic eye, is giving some blind people a second chance. The implant is no larger than a pencil eraser, and it is surgically placed on the retina inside the eye. The resulting vision might not be perfect, but it is life-changing. You climb up the steps? Yeah. Okay. For 55-year-old Roger Ponce, Good. it began early. Um, I was 14 years old. I flunked a eye test in ninth grade at the school eye test they give you. Slowly, over time, his eyesight began to fail. By me in my late 20s, I voluntarily gave up my driver's license because I was afraid of like hurting a kid or getting in a wreck or something. Roger was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. It's a hereditary eye disease that damages the retina. That's a layer of tissue in the back of the eye that converts light to nerve signals and sends them to the brain. He knew that one day the disease would leave him completely blind, but it didn't stop him from living his life or from getting the girl. He filled my arms full of daisies. I mean, he really swept me off my feet. He courted me. Roger married Terry 20 years ago, and five years later, he lost his eyesight completely. I fell in love with a man, not his eyes. I, I don't think I cared, and I still don't care what happens to the physical part. I mean, this is my husband, this is Roger, and I don't care. Do you? Whatever nope. happens to us, yep. happens to us, as long as we have each other, we'll work through it. As long as we're it. together. Then one day, he heard about the Argus II. It was a combination of a camera and a pair of glasses, and an artificial retina implanted inside his eye. Together, they could restore some vision. Nearly 200 miles away from the Ponce's home is the Kellogg Eye Center. It's at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Roger's been a patient here since that failed eye test in the ninth grade. It was the first call he made about the Argus II. Retinal prostheses have been in the making for, for some time. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have no pain in it. Okay, don't hurt or nothing. There are a number of groups around the world who have different approaches to patients with no vision. In the U.S., you know, the leading sort of uh, group was Second Sight. And they've spent 20 years making this product, and we've heard about it for the last num you know, number of years. The doctors were intrigued. The procedure was happening in other countries like Germany and France but it was not FDA approved as of yet. It was risky, and the rewards seemed low. But Roger didn't look at it that way. To him, any vision was better than no vision. He was a good candidate for the operation because his retina wasn't destroyed by the disease. Last year, the United States Food and Drug Administration approved the device, and on January 22, 2014, Roger Ponce became the second person in the United States to get the implant. Here's how the device works. An implant no larger than a pencil eraser is placed on the surface of the retina inside the eyeball. A pair of glasses with a small video camera mounted on it captures images and then converts them to small electrical pulses. The pulses are then transmitted wirelessly to the electrodes on the artificial retina. Any remaining cells that haven't been damaged by the eye disease are then stimulated by those pulses, leading to a perception of light patterns in the brain. The operation itself lasts around four hours, but the recovery takes a few weeks. In the meantime, all Roger and Terry could do was wait and hope. It takes a few weeks for it to heal up, and then they give you the glasses probably three weeks to a month after the surgery. First of all, they test, and they turn it on, and they said, we want to check the computer chip in your head, make sure there's no pain. I was fine. Well, before they turn it back on, they're like, you probably won't be seeing nothing for a while, you know, so don't really expect nothing. They turn it back on, and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, there was a light flashing on the screen, wasn't there? And they're like, yeah. And I looked up, and I said, there's a light up there. And I turned around, and I, you know, the three lights in the room, I pointed right at them. The surgery was a success. It appeared Roger was going to be able to regain some vision with the help of the glasses and the implant. But none of this was going to be easy. 
After years of not processing visual information, it's not just Roger's eyes that need to learn how to see again. You have to go through the process kind of like learning a new language. You have to retrain your brain to see and understand those images that are seen. So every week, the Ponces drive to Ann Arbor for rehab. Three hours there, three hours back. Yes, it's been hard, and yes, it's been expensive and a little rough. But what would you do to see again? How far would you drive? I will do whatever we need to do to make this happen. So what I want you to do is just hold them up, and it's going to be like we're completing a puzzle. So I want you to use... Today he was working on doing his low vision rehab. They start out in the beginning really just teaching them what they're seeing. So how do, how do they understand exactly what they're seeing? What's the difference between the dark lights or when they see the lights and when they don't see the lights? How to interpret um, what a shadow is, what's a light, um, and then learn about interpreting lines and things like that. This one is round. Yep, so what shape is that? Circle. Perfect. Throughout the process, the biggest question remains. What do patients like Roger with the bionic eye actually see? It's not perfect vision by any means. There's no color, there's no detail, there's only flashes of light. But it's enough to get around. And that's more than Roger had before. Wait, there's your monkey book. You gonna show me monkey book? Ah. Show Grandpa your monkey book. This has been pretty awesome. Yep. I can tell when my grandson runs around the house. Um, I can tell when people step in front of me. Just, you know, every day it's something small, but it's, it's something different. I remember when we went to U of M and they said he had end-stage retinitis, pigmentosis, and there was absolutely nothing he, they could do for him. Nothing. And just to go, they didn't say go home and be blind, but that was basically, there were no treatments, Just go nothing. home and live life. So that's another reason I think this R just too is huge. Nobody else is going to really have to feel like we did that day. They're going to hear something different than we heard that day. They're going to hear, well, you're in stage retinitis pigmentosis, but there's this new R just too that's been developed. Maybe you're eligible for that. Let's take a look at it. Sounds a lot better than go home and be blind, doesn't it? There have been four total operations performed at Kellogg this year. It's one of only two clinics in the United States currently doing the procedure. Ten more are now working to add the operation. The American Academy of Ophthalmology notes that surgeries like this do come with potential complications, and the procedure is still not available to the mass public. But they also note that for someone who has no vision, this is an outstanding breakthrough, even if the vision is still only rudimentary. And with the progress of patients like Roger, there is growing hope for the bionic eye and a second chance. You gotta believe in yourself, and I always have, that someday, yes, I would see again. Like I said, I didn't know how, what or when, but it's happening now.